Here's how you can capture the images that we need to make a virtual tour of your tiny house or other interesting space. Simply put, you need to capture spherical photos. And there's many devices that can do this, including contraptions for multiple cameras for super high resolution. But in this video, we're just gonna look at the device that we used because it's very easy to use and quite cheap at around $100 at the time of filming this. It's the Samsung Gear 360. And there is a newer version of this available, which is more expensive and more specialized for taking video, which is why this first version is perfect for this. The other piece of gear I've got here is a monopod, which is essentially a tripod with just one leg and little feet. And this is good for two reasons. One is that when fully extended, it puts it at a nice average eye height. And then when you're viewing in virtual reality and you look down, you don't see tripod legs. You can just barely see the feet on the floor. So I'll show you the basic setup, how to capture a photo, and then how to copy the photo off of the device. Behind the little door on the right, you'll find the battery, as well as a USB port and the SD card slot. And then there are three buttons, each of which do two things. Pressing and holding here will turn the power on or off, and a short press will back out of the menu, which is entered and cycled through with that button. And the top button takes a photo, starts a video, and also selects things from the menu. The screen is currently showing how long I can shoot video for because I'm in video mode. So if I hit the menu button, the next item is photo. And after a moment, it'll automatically switch to photo mode. And now we can see how many photos I can take. So if I press this button now, I can take a photo. But I just wanted to show you a couple tips of things to check in the menu. So hitting the menu button and cycling through to settings, I can hit OK. Now cycling through the menu to photo size, I'm going to hit OK. And cycling through these photo size options, I can see there's only two, 14 and 30. 30 is higher quality, obviously, so we just want to make sure it's selected, which it is. So I can hit the back button to back out to the previous menu. I'm going to continue cycling through to timer, hit OK. 10 seconds is a good amount of time for you to get out of the room after pressing the button. The other options are off, which would be an instantaneous when you hit the button. And for this demo, I'm going to use five seconds. Now it's kicked me back to the main screen. So I need to go back through into the menu to settings and cycle past timer to format. And be aware that this will erase everything on your SD card, but it's always a good idea to format a card inside the device where you're going to use it to maximize compatibility. So I'm going to cycle to yes, hit OK, and I'm ready to go. So now I'm going to unscrew the little stand that it comes with so that I can thread it onto my monopod. All right, let's take a photo. I'm gonna do my best to straighten the monopod, but we can do a bit of correction after the fact, so close is good enough. Then I'll just press the button and try to keep it as steady as possible. Normally I would run away and hide, but for this demonstration, I'm standing right in front of it. Now that the photo is taken, you heard the timer count down there. I can open this door. I just happen to have a USB cable connected to my computer ready to go. So I'll just plug that in and the computer should detect it. If there is some kind of problem, you can always just take out the SD card and use an SD card reader, but it's popped up here for me. And here is the photo that we just took. <laughs> this format is perfectly fine. You can copy these images and send them to us, and we can turn this into this, which is what we actually need, which is called equirectangular. So if you're using a different device, it's ideal if it produces this type of image. But if not, contact us and we'll do our best to work it out. One other thing I'll mention is that if you do have a Samsung phone, you can install their app and remotely control the camera, which is nice because you can stand around the corner and take the photos without having to do the timer each time. And you can also save the photos into the equal rectangular format. If you want to get into that, I'll leave it up to you. But uh, like I showed you, just using the camera and sending us the raw photos is perfectly fine.